what is up guys and welcome to yet another VPL Wi-Fi battle. This time actually Green Scrafty versus Bogat or the Chattanooga Chestnuts were to the Seattle Centro. Now looking for Bogat's team first, we see that he brought a bit of a mixed offensive ice team with a few heavy hitters and Pukumuku. Now Bogat did not bring Pokemon such as or Superior Swamper Cradilly and um while that doesn't necessarily need to be a bad thing, there are Pokemon that could have done well for this specific little matchup too, though Superior clearly being heavily walled out by, of course, a Mega Venusaur that Greenscrafty is carrying. Uh, Greenscrafty's team is actually rather ferocious, mainly because of uh, the theme of the team is rather bulky. Um, so the team that he didn't bring, or the Pokemon didn't bring, was the likes of a Lowland Nine Ninetales, uh, Toracat, Odino, and Krukujal. The rest, as you guys can see, are there. Uh, he's bringing a team of, of course, Float Seal, Mega Venusaur, Tarantrum, uh, Lucario, Necrozma, and Zapto. So very, very bulky with clear, clear indication of Pokemon that could be offensively in Bond. Now, with that said, Bogat's team is also as threatening, really. I mean, we have a lot of O's here. I mean, that's always scary. Vanilla's combination with Sand Slash, yeah, that's gonna be a thing. And of course, Heatran is always annoying. No matter what team is faces, really, it's always tough to kind of whittle down. And of course, Mega Pinsir. Uh, outspeed actually Bogat's whole team, and that's a very, very strong indication of what you need to be done. Now, clearly, Zapdos can wall it out, but that's pretty much it. Like, Pinsir hits like a truck against uh, Green Scrafty's team here. So, with that said, we're just gonna go, of course, the Wi Fi battle itself, and I'm gonna just try to narrate as best of my abilities. So, with that said, let's enjoy. So from the get-go, um, Bogat here, or the Seattle Center is going to lead up with Vanillox, which is a very, very strong lead here, because it does heavy amount of damage to almost anything on the team, really, as Rudy is going to start off with his Float Seal. Now, here's the first turn, you know, it is tough for Rudy deciding what to do. He's going to go for Rock Tomb, though, uh, and had it been Life Orb, this might very well have been a KO, actually, because it just does a lot of damage towards the Vanillox. What is unfortunate here is the Vanilla will be able to KO Float Seal, mainly because the Freeze Strike is really strong, and of course Vanilla itself has a very, very high special attack. It's a bit unfortunate turn here for Rudy. Clearly, you know, when the crossman might have been a switch in here, but even at that, Blizzard spamming is still doing a lot of damage towards him. So Vanilla is still kicking, as he's gonna send in his uh, Lucario, and Lucario here is a big threat towards Bogat, because it does super effective damage on almost everything on his team, as he most certainly was predicting against the Lodios, as it goes for Dark Pulse and Shukumuku clearly showing how specially defensive of monster this Pokemon can be. Now, Green's Crafting here actually have a very, very nice set towards Shukumuku. I'm gonna go for Substitute knowing that Shukumuku can't touch him whatsoever. We, don't, we have you know, the likes of Toxic as his only possible offensive move outside of Counter Mirror Code. So, um, Bogat does a very good play here, actually go for Baton Pass in case he switches out, which sadly he didn't. And now he has a tough call with Heatron, you're, you're gonna go try to break the sub here, or you're gonna go for the rocks. Uh, we see leftovers here, which means that it's most likely is a more bulky variant of an Heatron, as um, Green's Crafty actually goes for the all-out pummeling, and that might very well be enough to KO the Heatron, and it of course makes sure that he possibly could remain behind the sub. Now, it's very strange seeing Lucario with Simus because he just stands completely still as he uses it. And the Hedron is actually pummeled to death. So, from the get go here, it looks like actually Green's Crafty has a massive momentum going on here, still behind a sub. That is, for all sense of purposes, really, really, really dangerous. As uh, uh, Boga's gonna send him Hercules, which of course is the Pinsir. And he's gonna go straight off the Mega Evolution, most certainly. It could go for a return or a quick attack, just breaking the sub, which could be so important at this point because it's really, really hard pressuring Bogat at the moment as he goes directly for the return. And that's clearly going to take out, of course, the substitute as uh, Green Scrafty has a trick up his sleeves and has hidden power rock. And that's going to KO the Mega Pinsir. So things are looking tough here for Bogat. Just by a few turns in, Lucario is just plummeting throughout this team without any way of stopping it necessarily. Now Bogart does send in Latios here and clearly Latios is of course faster. So he switches out, goes to of course Migraine which is the Necrozma and Necrozma is just gonna soak this Psychic. It is no way to burn Necrozma soaking hits. It's the best thing it does. Uh, so we're gonna see Leftovers and um, 
I was predicting Dark Pulse, something like that, to be able to hit, of course, Latios, as he goes for Draco, or Bogot goes for Draco, and it's gonna actually do a good amount of damage here. Necrozma is bulky, sure, but not that bulky, as, of course, he's gonna retaliate with a Thunder Wave, which is just incredible, very, very good prep here, shutting down the Latios, making Tarantrum now a very, very strong Pokemon to actually wrapping up this possible game. Now here's the thing though, we still, Bogat still has a few options honestly, one of those of course is that he could still set of course any kind of hail in motion and use Sand Slash to that of course and stop threatening. Because Bogat, while loose Heatran and Pinsir still has of course the Vanillix act active of course, we have Sand Slash still active, we have Pugumubu still active and Latios, we still are actually 5 through 4, so it's actually still a big roster and it's not much time to actually wrap up what actually happens here, but as you guys can see, the half of the game has actually gone, as the Vanilla is just gonna go, go for a strong, strong Blizzard, and that's gonna kill the Migraine, huh, how about that, and <laughs> um, actually here, Rudy is gonna send in his Ludicolo, no, Lucario, <laughs> Lucario, that's a Lucario, clearly, but he messed up his IVs and actually didn't prep for a max speed Vanillax and it is just able to KO the Lucario too. So here Rudo is thinking, alright, he's gonna send him his own Hercules, being of course his Tyrantrum, but instead of going for an Outrage or a secure move, he did go for Head Smash and it did not connect as Blizzard's gonna kill the Tyrantrum too. So Vanillax is just going on a massive kill spree right now, as of course, the only mons that of course Rudy has left now is the Mega Venusaur and the Zapdos. So, reinforce the Mega Vault here directly, he's just gonna go for the secure Sludge Bomb, as Blizzard's of course gonna do a very, very high amount of damage, and there's really nothing to avoid that, as uh, Blizzard just gonna annihilate close to Venusaur here, doing over 100 in damage, and the Sludge Bomb of course gonna KO the Vanillax. So at this point, it looks really, really, really tough for Rudy as this vanilla just broke him apart. And of course, Sand Slash, well of course, the, um, the hail is gone. Sand Slash is still in a speedier variant, and if this is a bulky Venusaur, it's gonna die to the Icicle Crash, as of course, it does outspeed, connects the Icicle Crash, and the Mega Venusaur will sadly fall. So, at this moment, we only have Zapdos left, and whether or not Zapdos can take a hit from, of course, this Alolan Sandslash is up for, of course, the debate, as he's gonna simply go for a discharge, he just outspeed, clearly, you know, Sandslash is not that speedy, and uh, he gets the lucky paralyzation, but, sadly, Sandslash will find his momentum and, of course, break apart his paralyzation, but surprisingly enough, it is not a KO, Showing us, of course, that it's most likely a Jolly Set over Adamant, or you no, know, Zapdos might just be that bulky, who knows? As, of course, um, Ruby here will be able to retaliate, go for a discharge, just taking him down. And um, yeah, at this moment, we have Latios left, but together with, of course, the Pyokamoko. But here's the thing it doesn't necessarily matter what um, Ruby does at this moment, because he's not able at this moment to do any kind of damage towards, of course, the Latios, and of course, the Draco is a guaranteed KO, so he's just gonna go for Discharge, taking the Pukumuku down, and of course, falling with it, not letting Latios get in the kill. So, Pukumuku gets his first kill, of course, from the season, and so does Zapdos, not gets second kill, whatever. But, yeah, that's actually the wrap-up in a 1-0 favor win in Boga's favor, and a very, very strange wrap-up, really. So, yeah, you know, what did exactly happen? Well, I guess you could say it is. I do believe most of you guys kind of felt the same way too. Rudy here or Green Scrafty gets a massive momentum from the beginning with the Ludicolo, KO in Heatron and Pinsir, and he, I think he starts relaxing here. It is a very, very tough uh, situation to be in when you get your mass the two massive threats out of the way. You know, how do you prep towards that? And of course, the Vanilla is just being a Pokemon that is not very, very well used often, um, not prepping necessarily too much towards it, and as you guys saw, that thing is a threat. That thing clearly was a threat. I do believe had Rudy gone for Mega Venusaur instead, just go for Sludge Bomb, trying to KO it instead of using Tarantrum, we would have a much, much different game. And the same thing with Float Seal. Uh, clearly, that was a mod that could be capitalized really, really well throughout the matchup. Uh, didn't have to fall turn one there. It was really unfortunate. 
but at the same time, you know, that's the game we play, and it definitely did go for the ship damage, and that very same ship damage could have, of course, worked in his favor had it gone for a more secure move than the Tarantrum's head smash. But as stated, you know, it is a risk we want to take, and of course, since it was Scarf, he wanted to lock himself into that. Head smash, in theory, just wraps the game, so I get what it was trying to do. Now, with that said, I have to give Bogot, of course, every kind of um, credit here towards the game, because he lost, of course, his two heavy hitters towards this game, and still found a way to get back. And it really, really shows that, you know, even when you are pushed to the breaking point of Wi-Fi battle, it is still not over till it's over, and um, Vanillex breaking apart the team was just so interesting to see. And it also shows that, you know, going just all out with your certain Pokemon and going offensively might actually work in your favor. And of course, you know, the Sand Slash just throwing in there and the Puking Burger said, you know, with a Batom Pass, just getting trying to get some kind of momentum. It just, in the end of the day, you know, it really, really showcased what the... Um, any route in play does, and even of course preserving Latios, even though it was paralyzed, it was still an offensive Pokemon to be reckoned with. It still walled out a lot of Pokemon, such as of course Mega Venusaur and of course Zapdos really well at that point. So even if it was paralyzed, it was still a threat, and Bogart knew that, and eventually won the game 1-0. So good game, to, of course, for both of you. It felt really rough for Rudy, I do believe, as stated. Uh, he got the momentum needed to just relax in game. You cannot do that towards a player such as Bogat, who clearly knows the routine plays, even when he pushed to the absolute breaking point. So that's it, guys. Thank you, of course, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this battle, and you'll see me next time narrating somebody else's video. Until then, of course, take care.